All right, gentlemen, in 1988, we saw Smith and Stokey come back through the double final, play it to 15 and win. Now game number one, Smith, Stokey do the same thing. They win 15 to 12, except this time we're going to play the double final to seven. Hob, what's going on here? You were well rested. Well, you know what? It's going on. That game's over. This next game's playing. You can't look back. You got to look forward and you got to be ready to play. You know, I look at Dodd and say, listen, this game's a seven. Remember what it felt like last year? That wasn't a good feeling. Let's get out there. Let's go kick some butt. Side out for Jesus so we can serve the Lord. <laughs> side, out, side out for Jesus so we can serve the Lord. Hobby be dying or Dodd be dying and Hobby go, suck it up, suck it up. Let's go. Come on, suck it up. It's time to go, baby. And it was a hell of a match. Now, Stokey, this is the first time we're playing to seven this year, 89. I mean, 88, you guys played to 15, so you had already done this in 1989. You know, you played... Karch and Fro in 89, game Looking seven. Looking back at it, I wish we played to 15. <laughs> no, I, I thought, okay, we don't have to play as long to beat him. That's all I was thinking. Yeah, good thought. <laughs> <laughs> but you were thinking, I'm not going to let you it happen. You were thinking. In 1988, <laughs> I mean, it's in your head. It wasn't going to happen. 88 was not, 88 was not my time. 89, <laughs> never twice. Is another thing I say, never twice. Once maybe, never twice. More AVP Classic to come, the 1989 Hermosa Beach Final. Here we go. Players waiting just for a couple of uh, fans to sit down, and we're set, ready to go. Hovland and Dodd, we expect to see a little more intensity out of them in this particular one. Dodd makes it. Chance for a point. Not yet. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That goes down. Any double contact call? No. Bobby Clark says no. Randy Stokeless. Boy, that almost that looked very close to a double contact. Very risky play. Sinjin Smith in good position to get the set at the end, but Mike Dodd, tremendous defense, our prime ticket defensive player of the year. Sinjin waiting to hit. Randy Stokeless goes over his head. And Chris, that ball came out less than perfectly. Shaky, but good enough to get a side out. That was a point scoring opportunity that went by for Hovland and Dodd. Just one of the many in this championship final. And in a game to seven, you have to capitalize on every single opportunity that presents itself. Hovland ready to go. No score. Seven point tiebreaker. Right there. Mike. Come on! Off Hovland inside. Nice shot by Sinjin. Stats from our 15-pointer. Smith Stokos doing a job siding out lead-in kills. Sinjin Smith playing defense. Blocks very even. We oftentimes would expect that with Smith Stokos dueling it out. Look at unforced errors. The key to that match. Eight for Hovland and Dodd. Michael, come here! Cut! And Dodd seems to have new life right now. Key for them is pass set for them, Paul, the ball control. Must control the ball. When they got into a rut is because their serve reception was erratic. Both of them bump set the ball. It's clearly a disadvantage uh, versus their competition, Smith Stokos. They must receive serve perfectly, and Hobbs got to block some balls. Mike Dodd in the last game, 21 kills, 11 digs. Needs a couple of digs, and he had one right at the top of the game. Was Dodd saving himself? Nice play by Hovland. Can't convert. And just out of bounds. So Hovland and Dodd get the initial point of our tiebreaker. Hop Dodd, do not convert the point scoring opportunity. Get a little lucky with the error from Stokos. Not sure all the fans here at Hermosa have seen this uh, tiebreaker. We've only really implemented it in two different places. And so. Uh, I wonder if a lot of people think that they're just going to 15, Paul. Well, they'll find out very, very quickly, as the fans did in Rhode Island. That's the first place we saw it, Smith Stoklos versus Frohoff and Curai. Lots of controversy involved with that tournament as well. But I remember when the score was tied 6-6, the crowd was going crazy on every single serve. Gentlemen, it's time to talk about you as individuals. The strength of your game. We'll start with you, Sinjin Smith. You have to start with the defense. Hoff, weigh in on Sinjin's defense. Well, he had great anticipation. He knew uh, he, he knows the game so well, and he can judge when the ball is, you know, on the net. You only have certain angles, and send you to fil filter into there. Shots had to be crisp, you know, on the lines. Uh, he had good speed. 
you can always dig the ball as hard as you could hit it. He didn't really care. I mean, look at his face. He took a couple <laughs> off the face. He took anything. But he would use his body where today they're trying to dig out here where I think Sinjin would more bring it into his body and bring it up just so it would come up someplace. You know, instead of the indoor technique of having like this, he really use his body and keep his body in front of the ball. And uh, the players still today will do this and yell, Randy, because that's yeah. what you see. players still do it on the tour today. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, it, it, I think he perfected that dig of keeping it off of his body and keeping the ball somewhere on the court so Randy could get his mitts on it and throw it up there. Stokey, one word Karch would always use to describe Sinjin is relentless. Now, knowing you have the relentless defender behind you must have made life pretty good for you. Well, it was uh, it was very nice to have Sinjin behind me. Um, he anticipated the ball as well as anybody. He passed the ball as yeah. well as everybody. Everybody goes and says really and talks about my what? aspect of setting the ball and that I was that great of a setter. Well, Sinjin made it very, very easy to go and set that ball. If you look and watch his technique, that ball is always passed up and down. All I had to do is just get into the roughly the... the the specific area to go and set those balls in it, it it was a very easy thing to do back then too we didn't have any clock we didn't have anything so these games would go on for hours hours and Sinjin was you know it didn't look like he was in the best shape and I think <laughs> we're serving him we're serving him we're gonna break he's him he's gonna drop he's, he's gonna, gonna drop. drop he's gotta drop Never he's dropped. gotta trim Never dropped. but the funny thing is we in the years that we played and we played 12-hour days sometimes, I don't think one of us ever cramped. No, we never. No, nobody no. ever cramped. And that's for these young guys. You cramped these this year. I don't I mean, know what it is. you got to get together, guys. Their games are 40 minutes. 40 an minutes. An hour at the most, and it's they play a maximum hours, of four. And he never cramped. And I always thought, one of these times he's going to cramp. Yeah. <laughs> now, Hoff, <laughs> Hoff, let's talk about Randy Stokos. I mean, obviously, everyone knows the great all-around game, the great setter, unservable, great at the net. but. You have to talk about the power and strength. When he came into the game, was there anything like it? When, when Randy would hit a ball sometimes, you know, when I'd back off the net and Sinjin, unfortunately, would put the ball right on the net, and this thing would come, it would come with, you know, hell's fire. And this thing's coming, and it's bouncing over your head, and you're going, oh, that did, you know. But you couldn't let it affect you, because, you know, the people on the other sidelines are going, oh! <laughs> I go, yeah, I mean, I kind of got used to Randy you know, he beat that ball. Because he looked like a beast out there. He was a beast. He was Greystoke back in the day. <laughs> I mean, when that movie first came out, it looked just like the guy. He'd come up and, and, and very intimidating, you know, had a great arm swing, great sets. You know, another guy that would, you, you couldn't wear him down. He always looked fresh. He was ready to play. And, and, and uh, you know, then the, when he developed the jump serve was another weapon that really added to his arsenal. And, uh, you know, and then you're, you're hitting against them. We had a lot of battles at the net, and uh, it's always uh, a great competition to look forward to playing the Stoke. Sinjin, what did you used to think? I mean, sometimes when you would see Stokey just going off, did you used to just go, where where did he come from? Well, I, you know, what I, what I remember more than anything is Randy did, well, besides being a big guy who could play all aspects of the game, he could set the ball better than it's anyone. It's like magic in basketball, he, being he, a point guard at 6 He could back up off the net and dig the ball, which it was a tough thing to do, you know, for the big guys. Um, but but the thing that was, was so unbelievable is he would serve and block every ball. I never blocked, ever, unless for Thank some God. weird reason I got <laughs> stuck, you know, and I would block like this, right? Sinjin block, you might have won. Oh, <laughs> <more time>. <laughs> No, but, but he would serve and block every ball. He was an animal, an absolute animal. And, and you know, when, when I thought that he was dying and absolutely dead and, and, and wasn't going to come back, you know, and he comes back out on the court just bigger and stronger and comes out and just pounding the ball, and people were afraid of him. Don't move. AVP Classics will be right back. Smith, the big man. On the team, BMOT. Stokos gets it up, and Smith gets it over. Stokos, and a point. There is no side change timeout. They just switch sides and continue on. Andy Stokos been watching the line shot from Mike Dodd all year long. Sticks his big left hand right into the line, stuffs the ball hard cross court. 
Tied at one. Michael! Yes! Line! Go! Uh oh! Kong block by Randy Stoklos. So two in a row for Stokey. That's the quintessential Kong just up there hanging and swatting balls down. Going to Mike Dodd again, serving him short. Pretty good set from Hovland. Randy's hanging, hanging, and then says, boom, swats the ball down. Beautiful Kong by the king of the Kong, Randy Stoklos. 2-1, playing to seven. And inside goes Dodd. He's been using that line shot a lot. And Stoklos just camped on that line. But you want to take one shot away completely. Mike loves to use the line for his side out shot. Has the hard cross court. Sinjin was there, but not ready to dig quite that sharp an angle right at his feet. And Dodd can't get there for the cut shot. Mike's hanging in the middle of the court as long as he possibly can to stop Randy Stoklos from calling out the offensive opening for his teammate, Sinjin Smith. That time, Mike waited and waited, went aggressively into the cross-court angle, couldn't quite get there. Take charge at the net. 3 1 Smith Stoklos. Sinjin moving on to the hob. You have to talk about the way he controlled the net. The way he controlled the referees or the net? <laughs> the net. <laughs> and the referees. Uh, uh, hob was pretty impressive. And, and when I got in trouble against the hob, it seemed like he knew what I was going to do before I did it. And he goes up so late and so quick that I would think something was open and then it was gone. And he was another guy who would serve a lot of balls. I mean, Dodd relieved him a little bit and came up and blocked sometimes. But, but Hobb did all the blocking. And you, you look over at the net and you go, he's not going to make it through the game. He's not going to make it. You know, he's like puking on the sidelines. He's dragging along. He's got his head down. And once he brings his head up, it's all business. And he's playing out there. And it, and it was hard. I mean, you can see in the matches, I would try to get the ball up and over the block. And he, oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> he slammed the ball Everybody down. I go, oh, no. And then I try to hit the angle. And he goes, yeah. <laughs> it because was, it wasn't so much that Tim and Mike were, you know, some of the best players, you know, on the beach. They were truly the, some of the best players that played the game. Uh, yeah, Tim, his athletic ability, really kind of almost unmatched. You know, every, you're talking about myself being strong and being having the ability to hit the ball hard. Well, maybe Tim didn't hit the ball hard, but I tell you one thing, he was as quick as anybody that ever played the game. And that quickness really enabled him to block balls, dig balls, and then put the ball away as he did. MD, really quick, what about Mike Dodd? Mike, you know, he, Mike always got in the right spot to dig the hard hit balls. I'd hit my, I'd swing the ball as hard, swing at the ball as hard as I could, and Dodd was like, oh, pop, he'd pass it. Yeah. Go, How does that happen? He had the ability to come up with big digs at, at the, the right, right time. time. Yeah. And I can remember even in the latter part of that final that I hit a ball down the line past Tim, and sure enough, who's standing there? Mike. And that ball comes up, and I misjudge it near the net, and I shank the ball, and they score a key point key in point. that final. And uh, that's really the, the point that really hurt us the most. Stick around. More AVP Classic to come. The 1989 Hermosa Beach Final. And Smith and Stoklos trying to wrap it up, just like they did last year, right here at Hermosa Beach. They came all the way back to double final. And feeling fresh is Sinjin Smith. Oh, we'd like to win the big money tournament. If there's been any knock on Smith Stoklos, is that they haven't been able to come through for the big money tournaments, some of the Cuervo events and the big Miller events. And this would be a sweet one, wouldn't it? Well, you remember earlier in the graphic, they've been the top team over the course of the last six or seven years on the Pro Beach Tour, and yet they're third on the list when it comes to big game hunting. And Stoklos. He's doing it, and Sinjin egging him on, rooting him on. Do you remember how fired up and focused Sinjin Smith was in Chicago in the other double final and again in Rhode Island? I think Sinjin loves this challenge of coming back through the loser's bracket. 
Hovland dot in deep trouble right now. They're on the bad side. They trail 4-1. We're playing to seven. And Stokas has the heater going. Another troubled pass, but Hovland recovers and does it beautifully. We're changing on multiples of two, so it's really up to Hovland Dodd. They, they must get a point and go on to the good side at 4-2, you would think. Any more lead from Smith Stokes. They go out to 5-1, and it's never over until it's over, but that would really be a commanding lead. Hov Dodd need to make something happen. They're falling into the uh, doldrum like they did in the, in the finals of the tournament itself before this uh, Michael! Michael! Dodd is there on the little dink. Touch, touch on Stokos. So Hovland and Dot do indeed get their point. They needed it. Should be a side change, Chris. Multiples of two, the score 4-2. Smith, Stokos leading Hovland and Dot will have a side change and play will be continuous. Players not really used to this format either. This no, is the third time, board. and so they're not really used to walking under at multiples of two. And that's just to offset the wind conditions and the sun condition. Sun is setting in the west here, the latest tournament on record, at least this year. Sun's going down and... Right there. Fine. Blocked. Hovland got one. So the hog. And the crowd's still here. New game, Chris. Pressure back on Smith Stokos, I think. They're on the bad side. Smith. And Hovland blocks it. Over, angle. And Stokos pokes it right on the line. Your Paul, right down to the wire. Right there. Angle, angle, angle. Mike, get out! Oh, the cut shot comes back. He tried to make it a little too fine. He's been shooting so great all day, Paul. And that one would have gone down also. But it just would not go over. Sinjin's hit this shot a hundred times today, probably. And here's one that he'd like to have back across the top of the <laughs> tape and just out of bounds. I've let it die going. <laughs> Get back over there. By four. Hovland and Dodd trail by one. Right there. Oh, and that's out. Did Hovland touch it? No, he didn't. So two errors uncharacteristically by Sinjin Smith. And the Hovland contingent starts to whoop it up. We keep criticizing the serving strategy of Hovland and Dodd. They've stuck with it. They've stuck with that strategy, the blocking strategy and defensive strategy. And they're right here, tied five all, game to seven. And remember, everybody, only have to win by one. And Hovland and Dodd are back on the good side. Hovland and Dodd have outscored Smith Stoklos 4-1. Remember, it's just win by one, first team to seven. Tremendous defensive play by Mike Dodd. Randy Stoklos may be anticipating the ball hitting the top of the tape, caught by surprise, and misses the free ball opportunity. Hovland and Dodd, championship point. What a comeback. Just on the line, a saving spike by Stoklos. Somehow, Hovland and Dodd have turned it around. Smith Stoklos now in. Well, they are in serious trouble. Just one point away are Hovland and Dodd. Smith Stoklos playing so smoothly. A few quick points in this game to seven, and Hov Dodd are back in the driver's seat. Double contact, that's legal. Hovland. And Hovland with a tap down. 
Nice set by Mike Dodd. Coming up the second championship point. Bob dusted himself off after a nice save. I think Bob Dodd would tell you this is not one of their best performances, but they're on the verge of winning this championship. The good ship lollipop sails off with all the money. And when you don't play well, when you fight and struggle and still win, those are the moments you remember. You could see it when they score a championship point. Smith still close. They were in the driver's seat. They were controlling the bar so beautifully, but yet Hoglund and Dodd go away with a championship. Somewhere the match got away from that man and his partner, Sinjin Smith and Randy Stokeless. Well, gentlemen, that is Woo, it. And yeah, 1989 baby. is different than 1988. <laughs> Thank God. Bob, a winner, seven to five. You yes, came back. it was a big comeback. Uh, MD came up with some great digs. Uh, we settled down, you know, down five two. I still think that ball that Randy hit by me going about Mach four that <laughs> hit MD. MD was in the back. I think it hit him like a chicken wing, and this thing came up. It's spinning like a globe like this. <laughs> And I'm going, oh, no, I'm trying to get at it. And this thing just goes over there. And Stokey goes, doing it, goes, whoop. And out of balance, it, it, it was impossible it was, to play. That, that it's ball impossible. was wobbling. <laughs> and I have to say, it was, you know, it's one of those weird plays that happened, uh, you know, in the sport that you're, you, know, you don't play for that. You don't practice that. You can't. And it was um, something that went in their favor. But, again, you know, it was one of those matches that really came down to the very end again. Like, Pretty much all of our matches. There was never really, really one blowout. Well, maybe one blowout that Tim had against us. But um, at the same time, we were very competitive, and it it, uh, it really came down to the last points. Sinjin, your your head in the hands, dejected. Were you thinking this one got away, or did they come back and earn that one, Sinjin? No, no, we don't give anything to anybody. <laughs> you know, they had to oh, earn it. it. They had to go and and make digs and blocks to win that game. I just, I, I couldn't believe it happened the way it did. I, I mean, you could see after the match, I, I was, I still couldn't figure it out. It was, it was a bit shocking, I have to say, at 6-5, you know, uh, whether that they scored a couple points to get to that point, I still thought that we were definitely in the driver's seat, that they, we were going to go and beat that team again. I always thought that at the end of the game we were going to win. I always thought it, always, 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 and I well, was you just think shocked. That. I was shocked. <laughs> At, at, at what happened at the end of that game. Absolutely shocked. I, just, I, oh, I just, was shocked, too. I'll have you know that, so I, that I graduated high school that year, <laughs> and I was at the game. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't go out that night in the South Bay. Can you tell me what the South Bay was like when Hob Dodd actually under, beat Sinjin and Stokey in a final in the South Bay? <laughs> they were tipping was, cars over, <laughs> like storefronts on fire. It was a riot atmosphere. Yes, it was beautiful. Hey, Sinjin, would you still stick around? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Was, of course you know, he would. We all stuck around no, no matter, you know. The party, win or lose, the parties were always great. And and mm -hmm. again, I said it before, the fans whether they were rooting for Hav or rooting for us, they they appreciated us hanging around, having a good time with them. I mean, here there's no other sport where the very best in the game would mingle right in with the crowd, would have beers with them after the tournament's over. Point. And, and just in, enjoy the whole atmosphere. It just, it doesn't happen in any, any other sport. And most of the time, the beers were free. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the most important thing. I'll tell you what, Randy Stokos, Sinjin Smith, and Tim Hovland, you guys delivered once again, two weeks in a row, the 88 Hermosa final, which Randy and Sinjin won, and then now the 89 final, Javi Dodd. Thank you guys so much. I hope you had a good time as, as much as everyone else awesome. out there watching. Thank you, Dieter. Dodd, Hovland, score! championship the good ship lollipop sails off with all the money